How you doing? The Navion is in the shop. Yesterday when we took it to get an oil change, well first off when I was changing the battery and everything, trying to get it started, I heard a pst, and then uh, the engine light came on. So then yesterday took it to the shop and uh, to get the oil change and uh, had absolutely no power. Like, I couldn't get it above 30 miles an hour on a hill like this. And it'd take a long time to get there. So it's almost like the turbocharger is completely gone out of it. Or there's a head gasket. I don't know. It could be something major. It could be a, a vacuum leak. Who knows? Or it could be a computer problem. Because, you know... I was changing the battery. Maybe the computer needed to reset itself or something. I don't know, but it's uh, it's not good. Um, the the guy at the shop, they don't work on uh, sprinters anymore. They changed ownership, and uh, I don't know if they'll ever get to work on sprinters again at the Freightliner shop. So, gotta wait and see on that. He kindly took it in because I have a history there, and. Uh, and he's, he's working on it. He's going to diagnose it and everything. I don't know how much all that will cost. But, but the clouds of doubt are hanging over whether or not in a week or two we get to go on vacation anyway because um, we have kids under 12. And a lot of people have chosen, chosen to not take any safety precautions to not protect themselves or others against the virus like completely irresponsible idiots and I mean this is a choice because vaccines in America are free and um, they're everywhere all you have to do is get your lazy ass over there and get a shot but people don't want to do it and they're buying into all this nonsense that is going around half-truths, lies, propaganda, that there's something bad about the vaccines. Like, for instance, I know somebody who's afraid of getting vaccinated because the government is putting something in the vaccines where they could track you. And I'm like, idiot, they track you all the time. And you willingly give them the information yourself. You use a cell phone, don't you? You know, there are ways of turning off a lot of the tracking information in cell phones that most people aren't aware of or won't even bother to do. Or, you know, just go old school and don't even use a cell phone if you're afraid of the government tracking every little stupid move you'll make. Like, they really care. You know, the government doesn't care that much. You know, who cares is large corporations they want information on you so they can figure out how to sell to you have you ever wondered when you get on the internet why there seems to be ads that just so happen to be in your interests and what you like it's because they're tracking you because every keystroke you make you know every time you turn on the TV now there's a lot of smart TVs they figure out what you like to watch you got uh, services like um, Apple TV or Chrome, you know, whatever. Every time you get on the internet, you're being tracked. And that's stuff you do willingly. Why in the hell are they going to put something in a virus, in an antiviral shot to track you? That seems, that's illogical. It doesn't even make sense. But this is a justification people are using. And I'm, I'm serious. Maybe we ought to all get together with a lawyer and have a class action lawsuit. If you don't have all your shots by a certain day, then you owe us money. Because think of all the lives that are, are endangered and just the inconvenience. You know, if we don't, if we aren't able to go somewhere, that's not a big deal. I'm not really necessarily crying about that think about it we're not going out and spending money anywhere we're not going on any tours we're not visiting any museums we're not eating out at any restaurants we're not staying at any campgrounds or hotels or anything you know all because people don't want to get their shots 
it's just uh, it might be irresponsible of us to take little kids out into the world where they can't get their shots they don't have a choice and the kids they hate needles they're afraid of them but you know what they'll stand in line they'll get the shots willingly because they know they're responsible they're more responsible than the adults and they, they say that too about the um, schools they had a hard time with uh, schools being shut down because of uh, outbreaks within the kids and they say oh these outbreaks don't happen because the kids are uh, being irresponsible the kids do what they're told they wear their masks everything else like that the problem is their parents insist on taking them out to large gatherings like family gatherings or sporting events or things like that unprotected and the kids are getting it from that so maybe we as a human race are just too stupid to figure it out you know nature is trying to figure out how to get rid of a lot of us there's too many of us on this planet and uh, you know the question goes out well who gets to decide who stays and who goes and I think the answer is becoming obvious unfortunately the people who are deciding people are deciding themselves are weeding themselves out but unfortunately I wish they leave innocent people out of their poor decision making I've ranted enough Time to get my coffee and go home. Hey, how you doing? Uh, where to begin? I'm picking up vittles. You know, the missus is working. and that Where to begin, where to begin, where to begin. Let's talk about the mask mandate is coming back. St. Louis did it. A couple days ago, Kansas City just announced today that they're doing it, and unfortunately, I forgot my mask. But why do we have the mask mandated again? I thought the the virus was was on its way out because you know um, there was a very effective vaccine that was distributed in the United States for free. And it's available to everyone over the age of 12. Well, the, the reason why the um, the virus is coming back with a stronger, more vir- virulent, more contagious strain is because people have chosen not to get the vaccine for various reasons. And so now the rest of us are paying. There is a lot of us in this country, probably a little over half who've done the right thing and um, the responsible thing. We protected ourselves and our families and we've protected our communities by getting getting vaccinated and helping to build up immunity to the virus. But there are a lot of people who, for whatever reason, have decided not to and um, have enabled the virus to get itself stronger eventually if this keeps up then you know it could be an extinction event who knows and maybe that's the the reason why because nature has had enough of too many human beings oh look at this there's a road truck is that a road truck yeah that's a road truck very rare. What's a road truck doing there? It, the potty looks a little rough, but it's a newer than ours. Wow. Well, anyway, so just to make this long story short or whatever, it, uh, I guess you can get mad about it, but maybe getting mad is not going to do anything. And You know, maybe it's a part of human nature and maybe it is something, you know, Um, The too many human beings polluting. uh, And maybe it's just nature trying to thin out the herd. And, you know, just starting with um, getting rid of us by taking taking on the morons. Maybe that's what's happening. But either way, uh, I got to wear masks indoors. I got to wear my mask to work tomorrow. 
I had a really good day at work today. Um, I haven't done a, a satellite. One of my job requirements is to be able to tune in satellite shots. We had a satellite shot this morning and I hadn't done one in over a year and a half, probably more like two years now. And uh, when it came time to do it, first off, I, I went through as best I could and I reviewed yesterday how to do it. And I tried to set up the window and I got it all set up as best I could yesterday. And I was like, okay, and all that's left is to wait until the satellite window actually opens. It's one of those deals where you can't just sort of um, pre-do it and test it out. The satellite window has to be booked and it opens and um, then you know it's either there or it's not. And if it's not, you have very little time to figure it out. And it's very important, otherwise something's not going to make air like a big chunk of our show this morning and uh, so when the window was getting ready to open I went back and I was like it's not there yet uh, shoot and then I looked through and I found a setting and I clicked on it and blink, it showed right up I was like whoa I was so amazed and the guy that I work with who um, I don't I don't think he's thought much of me in the past because I haven't demonstrated any skill or ability at my job, unfortunately. He was extremely pleased because I think he's never done one under pressure. So, all right, you gonna let me over? Thank you very much. So, we got her done and it's a good feeling when you do something right for once. And uh, the weather is super duper duper hot. Uh, the heat wave they predicted last week is here this week. And so we're just kind of like hiding under our rocks, trying to keep cool like lizards. We're the lizard people. <laughs> we won't go outdoors for anything. Uh, the kids have actually been pretty resilient. They've been going out. <laughs> And using our Luddite mower and gardening and watering and but everybody's getting a little stir crazy and uh, we're trying to plan our vacation um, and the Navion is down and out I mean it's not completely out it has an exhaust leak and it has um, the carrier bearing has been going out. That's what's that that noise we've been hearing is kind of like the noise as we drive. And um, neither of them would prevent us from doing a vacation, but it's not a good idea because uh, that if that exhaust leak goes out again, and uh, you know I have to get it reset. I can't reset it myself. I have to have it reset by a Mercedes professional and. I'm not sure, you know, in the middle of uh, wherever we're going, it can be reset. And if it goes out again, and it, it has absolutely no power. You can't even get the thing above 30 miles an hour in most cases. And uh, so, and it's not a good idea to drive like that anyway, because you could cause some engine damage. Americans are starting to build roundabouts everywhere, but <laughs> the roundabouts sort of eliminate the need for a stop sign. And but uh, for the most part, they use them to uh, slow down traffic, which I think is a wrong reason to create a roundabout. And uh, and so the roundabouts that we're building are actually too small and unsafe, I think. People are just impatient. They don't know how to yield. And anyway, uh, other than that, I've been doing a lot of these driving videos, which kind of gets boring. But for the most part, I've, uh, during the week, I've been kind of working and going home and trying to take care of some things. Uh, I like this drive. You should eat, like to go home this way. It's sort of like this uh, country country road 
although it's real close into the city. And, um, yeah, other than that, I'm going to try and make some, some interesting content. I haven't added to uh, my Travel America's Backroads channel for quite some time because I haven't been doing those kind of uh, things where I've just been busy lately. So it's like the daily boorish stuff, which is mostly my journal made mostly so I could look back on it and go, okay, this is what I've been doing. You know, like a daily diary in video form. So I'm sure it's not the most interesting content for people to watch. And obviously not because the numbers don't lie. People don't don't really want to watch it. But there's a lot of things going on on the Internet these days. And one of those things is... Uh, um, Thanks to a lot of people spreading lies and propaganda and hatred online, now the rest of us are suffering. I've had two posts taken out of uh, Facebook for offensiveness, and they weren't really that offensive. I mean, they were just off-color jokes. But they were not things that I haven't ever posted before and gotten, you know, no notice on. But lately, we've been really sensitive. And we've been sensitive because you can't uh, lower the boom on one person and leave everybody else alone because the one person will start complaining unfairness and censorship. And so when you, when you lower that threshold, it's got to be lowered for everyone. And unfortunately, these are machines who do it. It's not human beings who do it. It's algorithms and bots. So you say certain things and boom, your post is gone and next thing you know, you're facing Facebook jail, which is all right, because you know what? That'll be the end of Facebook and maybe something better will come along. And a lot of this is because of uh, sites like Twitter and Facebook have not been very good about um, being sensible when it comes to certain types of speech. You know, when you communicate violence or... Uh, hatred against uh, an ethnic group, especially when the hatred leads to violence, or you put out misinformation, disinformation, that should have never been in the first place. But it was allowed and tolerated. And that's why we're all starting to pay for it now. So, yeah, you know, now this overreaction is happening, and that'll be the end of these websites. And good riddance. Because maybe somebody has a better idea that's being squelched because... These, uh, these sites have been taking up all the air. And, um, yeah, we still don't know where we're going. We need to go somewhere, but we don't need to put the children in danger. And again, this all ties in with the, what I was talking about, the mask mandates and the morons in this country and all over the world. So... The big thing is that they don't have um, vaccines for kids under the age of 12. And, um, you know, if people just did a little bit of reading or research, you don't even have to do a lot of reading. Just watch some videos. You can see what has happened in the past. What has happened in the past is... Uh, these things mutate, they get stronger, they build up inside people, they incubate in people as they get from one person to the next, they mutate into something more stronger, more vir vir virulent, and more able to survive, and uh, they also start targeting younger and younger people. Hey, I get the one, get off there, Leaf. Leaf, Leaf. Of our lovely road construction, I haven't checked to see how long this is going to go on, but I know that they they need to do some work, and they've needed to do some work on this road for the past couple of years because I think the subgrade has failed, and I think they're about to bring it down to 
the lowest level looks like they might be it's not no the subgrade hasn't failed I can see the concrete original road I think what they did was they put uh, probably a bad contract where a contractor sort of cheated the city and did a lousy job in uh, adding the asphalt to the top so they're scraping it down I don't know we'll see maybe they'll they'll take that out too and maybe it is a subgrade failure you know this subgrade is a the grade below the road where you know they compact the earth and everything and build the road on top of it it's like the foundation of the road today maybe my last day of therapy I still have a little bit of pain it's concerning but it's, it's doable, it's workable. I think if I keep working through it and exercising it, it will eventually go away. I don't want to give ammunition to the anti-vaxxers out there because it's been a, a disaster. But uh, this was the result of a flu shot. And my wife has it. She needs to go to therapy for it and get her shoulder fixed. And I think the two kids who went with us to get the flu shot got it too so and uh, my camera is overheating it's really 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 hot I think the temperatures are been over a hundred every day almost every day this week so it's excessive heat warning and uh, the Navion is uh, we got her home no problem um, Mark the mechanic, the Sprinter mechanic at Freightliner is a terrific guy. Bent over backwards to help me, even though he probably didn't do himself any favors by doing that. And um, I don't know what they're going to do because I don't think the Freightliner, at least here in Kansas City, is doing Sprinters anymore. I'm not sure if Freightliner all over the country is quitting with the Mercedes. Um, they. I don't know if they are or aren't. I looked on their website and I saw that they still were, you know, offering sprinters for sale, so I don't know. But the mechanic here is wonderful, really loves, he's very passionate about sprinters, and he really, lo really loves them, and he worked to help us. Um, he did the diagnostics, which is huge. Um, I've called around to several other mechanics because they don't they don't stock the parts there so they can't do the work Otherwise I'd go I would they would be a Freightliner and they would have it done um, So It's um, There's this place in North Kansas City. I'm gonna try It's a place where the Goodyear takes their sprinters when they get them and so um, it probably won't be cheap, but hopefully we can get it done this week and we can have the Sprinter for our vacation. Otherwise, we have to make other plans. And that'll be kind of a letdown, but... Corner Cafe in Riverside, Missouri. The missus has sent me here to get some pie, which we really need pie. Started here in Riverside and has now grown to three locations. Established 1983. Look at the pie. Welcome. Who doesn't love the pictures on the walls? The old school lunch counter and the motorcycle and the decorations. And quirky is everywhere. Got our pie. And we got sugar free. They offer sugar free. I had to make the chocolate pie special for us but it didn't take them long 10 minutes wasn't bad you know we're talking basic comfort food home cooking mom's kitchen kind of thing and uh the prices are you know moderate not bad it's a very popular place a lot of people like coming here and they'll hang out at the lunch counter or they bring their families here for dinner this is friday so it's really busy right now even with the uh, the resurgence of the the thing that shall not be named. But um, yeah, and we like to come here and uh, 
every so often we'll eat. Usually we'll bring somebody here, like a guest or whatever, for eating out. And um, we like to get pies on special occasions and stuff for, for dinner. We're having skeddy tonight, so the missus had a hankering for a pie. And it's a, been a, kind of a, another banner, stressful week. So it's a great way to celebrate getting through the week and alive in one piece and relatively thriving so woo-hoo, now it's time to enjoy our pie mm, pie mm, we love our pie Give with our skeddy hey I'm in the Navion again and uh, this time we're trying to get this ready for when we need to use it in about a week and a half or two <laughs> I forget. Anyway, so sort of a rush, and um, I found out that the local Dodge dealership works on these still, and uh, also the uh, there's a Ford dealership that works on trucks. They do these, and um, so by calling around, I found a lot of places. I still haven't really got a confirmation on a Freightliner. I talked to one of the the people at the muffler place who told me about the the Dodge dealership and all these people working on them still and they said they don't do manifolds like when they connect to the engine block um, everything from the manifold on they do and uh, they also said oh and yeah we heard that Freightliner the whole company Freightliner is no longer doing sprinters they're not going to sell them they're not going to service them yada yada so, and then the other people I talked to, they hadn't heard of it. They don't know. And, and they even said, oh, you, you need to go to the Freightliner dealership for a Sprinter van. And, uh, and I said, yeah, I've been there. And I told them that Freightliner there, at least in Kansas City, doesn't work on Sprinters. So, so I, I don't know. You know, it's not official. It's just me saying it, that um, what I've heard is that... Freightliner does not do sprinters anymore, and you have to find other places to do them. And so when you look around, you'll find them. And, uh, you know, it's just it sucks that we can't go to the place we're used to. Um, and I don't know if you can hear that noise, that <whistles> noise in the background. That's the carrier bearing, and the carrier bearing. I believe the the drive shaft comes in two. Um, is basically two shafts. And in the middle is a place where it's held on and there's a bearing in there. Basically it carries the shaft and that's going bad on us. So, so yeah, we are. If I can only find a place to park, it's not so easy. It's not a very big lot. We'll go in and see what's what. Oh, hey, guess what? <laughs> After going down there and then telling me I was in the wrong place and need to come here, which was huge effort to do, um, they don't work on these, the guy inside tells me. They don't have the base for it, so I'm going to try another place and then do the Ford place. This is turning into an all-day ordeal. I hate that. Okay, this is my second place on this Saturday that I'm trying. This is a Midway Ford. And they said they probably can't get it till later on this week, so I don't know, we'll see. 
Okay, we got her checked into uh, Midway Ford. So we're going to get an estimate on what it's going to cost. And then, ah, look at this fluffy machine. I think I will. Hot beverages, coffee drinks. Coffee one, coffee two. Don't know what it is. Mm. Let's try. I think coffee one is the local blend here. So let's try it. Medium. Strong. Go. What will they think of next? Coffee. Hmm. It'll do. It's time for the boys to get their hair cut. Here at Jack's. Usually I do the how's it look thing, but rut row, somebody found Jefferson's. Eh, nine. Jimothy. Vittles. Mm, we are satisfied. <sighs> Time to finish our errands. So the missus and the kids, kiddos, are doing some grocery shopping and other shopping, and I'm chillaxing with the dongs. Right, dongs? And it's been a busy Saturday, and hopefully we'll hear about the Navion pretty soon in the week and find out, I'm pretty hopeful, find out that it won't be too expensive and that it will be done by... Friday, so woohoo, here's hoping. We are trying out filling station in Overland Park. Uh oh. Uh oh, Luke's been looking at girls. Yeah, nine. And we're playing cards. Coffee. Something yeah, like that. True drink. Yum, yum, yum. How is it, Luke? Thumbs up. What about you, Miss Sia? Do you like it? Mm -hmm. Is it good? So good you can't even talk. Mmm, yum. So that's orange blood, right? Ew. <laughs> yum. You mean orange blood because of the straw? Mm. There you go.
for the best part. Snack time. Yum. Mixed in with the American junk foods are some unique Filipino snacks that are homemade. But, uh, I don't know what those are called. They were just explaining it to me, and I can't get them over here to, to talk about it, but let's just say they're delicious. Mm. Now it's time for the adult dance. Like I needed her to hold it. 